Looky here. What a sight. It's not just a plastic. It's a lifestyle. What's going on everybody? Chris Jones coming at you uh, again from the fish cave and uh, welcome back to the world's worst fishing and uh, today we have a very special video. So the best days in a bait maker's life are probably new mold day when your plastisol went right so so when you're dead on plastic gets restocked when you get new AI molds in the mail when you get a new color that you've always wanted and then days like today which are super special we have the newest and improved latest and greatest bait makers hot plate so a little over a year ago um, I kind of teamed up with Kyle at fishing all out and we brought to life the very first like legit hot plate piece of equipment for high-end hand pouring concepts in terms of getting a flat even surface that can be leveled that won't warp that will actually heat the entire surface of the plate evenly so that you don't get hot spots in your molds we brought that to life for the bait making community and it's been a hit ever since i mean wait lists are sometimes up to six months i think um so we have ours today and kyle said he did something special with it i don't know what it is so i've been instructed to film the unboxing so uh it's right down here still in the box so that's what we're going to do next so here we have the very first ever paint makers hot plate it has been absolutely battle tested you can see the paint is even wearing off from where i touch it with oil on my fingers all the time you know from the plastic materials worm oil that kind of you know over time takes the paint off and as we can see we have a very very battle tested plate um still works just as good as the day i got it i accidentally melted off a piece of the pid controller <laughs> with the heat gun i mean this thing has absolutely been through it and i still pour on it almost every day and it still works just as well as the day i got it so it has stood the test of time and it can take a beating um, so before we get too far into today's video I'm actually sending this hot plate back to Kyle. It's going to be refurbished, new PID controller. He's basically going to give it an overhaul, clean this off a little bit, um, maybe do like a little bit of refinish on it. And then this one's actually going to go up for sale. So um, we're actually going to be putting the very first World's Worst Fishing hot plate up for sale. It's, like I said, it's going to get a, a, a facelift. And the great part about that is whoever winds up getting it, I don't know if it'll be an auction or if it'll be something else, but there won't be a wait list on that one. All right, I think I can now lift it out comfortably. Yeah, there we go. Oh, wow. Look at that. No kidding. Oh, that's like actually in it. That's like, I don't want to say embossed because it's not wood. Or, or is it? Wow look at that okay all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna get just want to make sure i get all the parts off that need to go back in the box holy cow you guys look at that that is absolutely incredible he he told me he did something neat and i was like what on earth is he talking about um so right off the bat amazing thanks so much kyle this is a one-of-a-kind piece of equipment kind of already was um one difference i can tell already i think the i think the plate itself is a little bit thicker and it's actually two size for the whole plate i actually had the very first one and the plate was actually maybe 18 instead of 24. um so i, ha I actually have a little bit more space and then it's with an upgraded blanket so the actual heat blanket under here which allows you that even heating across the whole surface this one's actually a little bit beefier heats up a little bit faster um it's just got a little bit more Oomph to it so we're gonna go ahead and get this out get it on the table and uh and then we'll start the show all right so we got her set up and uh that's just the coolest thing just how it's textured into the actual side of the plate and there's even some little fine flake some glitter in the finish um so let's go ahead and fire it up for the first time and uh okay so she's set for 275 all right so we'll uh we'll just kind of let her go ahead and heat up to 270 wow that's already yeah this definitely heats a little bit faster and when i say a little bit it looks like a lot so the real test is once you put a bunch of molds on it um and, and you have a lot of large plate pieces of aluminum 
they'll they'll kind of draw heat off the plate into the actual molds which will then kind of slow down the, the heat up temperature but just running this one by itself um, it's already pretty smoking fast yeah I mean golly watch that thing go yep that's hot oh super awesome okay um, now we just need to figure out what we're doing <laughs> I think I'll probably pour a set of five inchers um, because I think I need to, number one, and that's the most cavities I have of a large plate size, which will be a good test for, for the hot plate, is to heat up that much aluminum um, all at once and do a pour. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I got it leveled, leveled about as good as I need to. So we'll go ahead and lay out the molds and get started on actually making some baits with this bad boy. All right, so before we get too far into the video, I did um, want to show you guys the baits from the uh, bait maker trade pour off that I had, so to speak, um, with Johnny Sweet from 5.13 Lure Works. And um, I actually have the baits here in hand that he made from his end, and um, you can actually watch him make these baits. Um, I did the uh, Northern Lights set that are gonna be headed to him um, so anyway yeah let's just take a look here really really great work I like this sort of um, it, it kind of to me gives a violet highlight vibe what what his actual belly color is and then you know we have that skin layer you can kind of see the edge of his skin layer right there um, <clears throat> which uh, looks to have some more shift powder in it you can see and then he's got the uh, dotting paint dabbed in behind it Tilted the molds, got a really nice um, orange belly, or really not 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 a, not a belly. I'd call that an orange throat. Skin poured the head in sort of a purple blue to maybe red. Uh, hyper shift filled filled in the pectoral fins. Really great execution. Um, everything is blended really well. No cold cracks in the exterior. He uh, placed his plastic really well in the pectorals. Got nice even flat tops. Um, super work i mean there's there's no there's there's really nothing i can fault them for and then just to show off some recent work i did some um, also this is actually the same mold as the one that we just looked at this is the ai seven and a quarter inch and uh, i did sort of a layered sun gill pattern um, so if we look close you can see lots of shading lots of depth got sort of some splotchy black barring so it's not defined sort of like uh, a yellow perch would be, but it is very perchy, um, but it's more of a, uh, what I consider to be a sungill pattern. We have layers of sort of green pumpkin up under there, a lot of orange in the belly. So the orange kind of goes from the throat on up into the belly. So it's not just in the head. A lot of times I like to put orange just in the head as well. And uh, finished it off with some red eyes there. So yeah, these were a lot of fun to make. Lots of layering, took a long time to make them. Um, but yeah, so yeah, a little bit of uh, layered swim bait action here, and uh, let's get to the main event. Okay, so in honor of the new hot plate, I'm going to show you guys um, my absolute best-selling swim bait recipe, dotted hickory shad. Now, I know some of y'all are absolutely tired of seeing the swim baits. However, this is important stuff, okay? All right, so we're going to go ahead and pour the kill dot, all right? And, um, oops, sorry, out of focus. And the kill dots are really important because you want to have consistency in size and location. So I see a lot of people pour them either way too big or way too saturated, um, or they're just not placed in a good spot. To me, a kill dot should be right behind that uh, gill plate and it should be a little bit higher than the center of the mold. So we just say that right here is, is the center, right? Between the, the, the top and the belly. The center is about this line. I want it to be a little bit higher, okay? To me, that's just where a kill dot is on a real shad. All right, so about like that, okay? That's actually, to me, even a little bit too big. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe that one away and we will try again. Okay, so we have all the molds up on the plate, and uh, let's fire it up. And funny enough, I actually want 
my controller set to 275. Um, so if we look down here on the controller, all right, we'll just kind of watch it climb for a minute. And um, we'll go ahead and get the clamps ready. We will measure out plastic here in just a second. Um, but I'm really curious to see the heat up time on a full plate of molds. Um, I mean, that's about as full as you can get. Um, I mean, really, what, what more can you really fit on there? And, uh, and the 5 incher has a pretty big mold plate. So there's a lot of aluminum surface that has to heat up. And um, I know that this new plate is up for the challenge. And a good bait not only starts with a good mold and good materials, but also good plastisol. So we're gonna be using our dead on plastic swim bait blend today. So we're gonna go ahead and get this kind of starting to mix. Mix up our plastic real nice. And, uh, and then we will go from there, so. Now, just give it a little bit more of a good stirring. Mm, stirring it a little fast there. And uh, we are essentially ready for action. Wow, so just in the 60 seconds or so that we stirred the plastic, um, it's already climbed up past 200 degrees. So uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be to 275 here in just a minute. And uh, we can go ahead and start pouring. Man, just a few minutes later, already at 2.30. This is, uh, this is absolutely smoking fast, heating up this many molds which in turn is gonna save me time, right? No more sitting around waiting for molds to get hot. This new plate, unbelievable. Unbelievable already, just in terms of its build quality. It's just a little bit beefier. The plate's a little bit thicker. Um, you can probably put more weight on it for longer periods of time um, and not run the risk of warping. Now, my other one never warped at all. It's still as good as the day that it was born. But um, this new one's just a little bit beefier and it's faster. Do y'all have any idea how much more powerful my hand pouring is gonna be now? Like, yeah, it's on. I just gained 50% more hand pouring power just from this plate alone. And just like that, we are pretty much there I would say total heat time was less than 10 minutes. Absolutely smoking fast, and not only fast, but controlled and even. You know, you could probably find something that's faster, but it doesn't have any of the hallmarks that this plate has. And um, to me, this is now one step above what it was when I first got uh, the very first one. That was absolutely incredible. And so now the controller is sort of learning this thermostat because this is a brand new device. And so it will now kind of toggle back up to 275. So yeah, really, really awesome, incredible speed. And uh, the best part is it's flat, it's even, it's leveled, and the heating surface is even. The mold back there is gonna be the same temperature as the mold up here. And so we're gonna get even results, good thermal bonding and blending from ca every single cavity. There's not gonna be one that sucks and then one that's too hot, one that's too cold. That's the whole point of this whole thing is for you to be in control and um, we are in complete control of our temperatures here which is the most important thing in hand pouring. All right, now we're gonna show you a few belly pours here. All right, straight clear. Look how clear that is. It's like pouring glass. It's just like pouring glass. We're gonna bring it up a little bit. Bring it back down. We're gonna pour it just above that uh, hook slot insert. So maybe a smidge more. Yeah, there we go. Yep. See how crystal clear this stuff is. I uh, absolutely love it. Yeah. Beautiful. 105 real feel. Oh, and there's a hurricane coming to Florida, unfortunately. Yeah. 
Ugh, so this is great. Let's see if it'll uh, load. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, awesome. All right, well, back to some more colors. All right, and one of the secrets to this color is a blue highlight vein, but not just any blue highlight vein, a lot of blue highlight, okay? So this is blue highlight powder. All right, see how much is going in there? That's only a half cup of plastic. We're dumping a ton of highlight powder in there. And then, to really bring out the effect, I want to add a little bit of black. Two drops of black. Okay. Ooh, that could have been bad. Just about had an accident for you guys. All right. Now we're going to mix this in. As you can see, you can start to see the blue come out. So we want to mix nice and slow, not too fast. All right, but we have to mix a lot to get all of that powder mixed in. That is so much blue highlight. All right. As you can see, it's a very thick mixture of highlight. This gives off an incredible illusion that plays off of that clear belly. The clear with the strong, strong, strong highlight is what gives this bait its magic. You leave out one of those elements and you're never going to quite get the uh, the really cool illusion effect with the vein. You know, you'll still get a great looking color that'll catch fish, but to get this really, really unique look um, that, that the Hickory Shad has, or at least my version has, kind of got to do it this way. I've tried it a bunch of different ways. All right, and then the last little tidbit is a dab of blue. Now, I like to use Lureworks Thalo Blue. It's a very dark blue and it's very strong. So I'm just going to dip the tip of that knife in there and then add it. So a fraction of a drop. And that's essentially how I'm doing this vein color. All right, let's get a few veins poured for you guys. And uh, this, is, this is sort of the hard part, is getting a good vein poured where it's controlled. So we want to start there. All right, about halfway between where we want it to start and stop. Right, so you can see it's going a little bit up past the, uh, the kill dot there. So we want that vein to end right here in the tail and also end right there at that um, eyeball socket. Sorry if you just saw my head. I was just kind of blowing on it to make sure that it stopped where I wanted it to. You can sort of uh, use wind to just to blow on it to stop it from going too far if you accidentally pour it too much. All right, so here's vein number two. Maybe want a few more drops up there in that front just to really carry it home. Yeah. As you can see, you can do just a little things to manipulate it, but essentially we have our veins right where we want them. All right, my lighting is getting killed in here because we have a storm blowing in, so it's getting a little dark out. Top color. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven drops of scuppernog. Little work scuppernog. Two drops of black. All right, and then what really sets it off is a smidge of green highlight powder. And I'm talking about a micro smidge. Can't even get it to focus. A micro smidge of green highlight powder. So we went from mega highlight in the uh, vein to micro highlight <laughs> in the top color. It is so light, you can barely tell it's there. But in person, you really see the highlight and it just, yeah, you can kind of see the highlight effect going in there. It just sets it off. I don't know how else to say it. I would cry if I lost access to my scuppernog and my green highlight powder because that makes the magic happen. 
yeah so there is that beautiful hickory shad top color so we're going to uh, just make sure all that powders stirred in and not clumping all right make sure everything's good and stirred in and then we'll top these molds off and then we will have the first pour ever under our belt with the uh, new hot plate all right here we go let's top a few of them off for you so we'll just start with contestant one here cavity one sorry that some of my lighting has gone away like i said it's very dark outside which kind of makes it a little shadowy in here so i get lots of glare and shadows so my apologies perfect i would hate to just completely screw up the first pour on this plate you know <laughs> few of those veins didn't go perfectly to plan so I guess I already uh, failed a little bit there but that's okay it happens nothing's ever perfect people all right let's see how we did let's see if we messed up the very first pour on the new plate that's the only drumming action I get anymore all right See if it turned out. Hey. And it did. So if you look at the vein, you see how it kind of looks blue and purple. That is because there's so much blue highlight in there. That's essentially how I get that effect, is just put more highlight in there than any man should. So yeah, let's bring it over here where there's a little bit better lighting. That's my apple juice in the background yeah there it is dotted hickory shad so this video very quickly transitioned into storm prep so i've got the uh the nitro the bass boat pulled out of the backyard away from the big trees and uh sort of got it just tethered to the truck i might uh i might kind of park it in the driveway here and uh, probably put some sandbags out yeah that's what we're looking at right now i'm the blue dot so definitely gonna get some weather all right landfall is happening about 30 miles from here down towards uh well i guess over near perry so we're gonna hang out for a while and uh, hope we make it through. Now I gotta try to walk the dog in this. Yeah, there's a gust right there. Holy cow. Jeez. Hickory shads. Looking good. Okay, everybody. The storm has passed. So I wasn't really necessarily um, expecting this to be sort of a hurricane bait blog. Um, however, um, we really, really got fortunate here at, at 11 o'clock. So like the 11 p.m. advisory last night, they showed it shifting back west, which was going to put it making landfall right next door to Tallahassee in the Oscilla River area as a Category 4 Um it then shifted a little bit back eastern and went where it was kind of originally tracked and um, really hit the Keaton Beach, Steenhatchee, Perry area really hard. So, um, yeah, man, our thoughts go out to those communities. Um, we got really lucky. Um, so, however, um, we're going to kind of get back to some bait making matters, I guess, try to continue on. Um, really fortunate to have electricity to even do this right now. Um, so what we did is uh, we went ahead and um, kind of finished up those hickory shads. And then now we're going to pour some worms on it uh, because I'm really curious to see um, the cook time in terms of getting the molds to temp with a much flatter mold. Okay, so um, you know what? Here, I'll explain it on the actual plate. Okay, so this is the angling AI molds. Uh, six inch open pour botworm, <clears throat> one of my favorite baits to pour. <clears throat> and as you can see, 
right? The style of mold, it's just a flat plate, okay? So there's a lot less aluminum surface to heat up if you think about the swim bait molds, okay? When they sit on the hot plate, they sit more vertically. Heat has to transfer, oops, heat has to go from bottom all the way up to the top, right? To really get this mold to temperature, all right? This, however, heats up a lot faster. So on the new hot plate, I'm kind of thinking this is going to go so fast, I won't even get plastic mixed out in time. So what we're gonna do is a good old fashioned red shad laminate, which means we need a black top and then a red pearl belly. So basically we're gonna be pouring a two color laminate in this teeny tiny botworm ca uh, cavity. All right, I'll do this on camera the best I can. We have to basically pour half black, half red. So we're gonna start with what is essentially the top color. Yeah. And we want to leave enough room. Sorry if that's a little out of focus. I'm trying to get, give you all the best angle I can while allowing me actually room in front of the camera to actually do the work. We're going to go ahead and mix in our red pearl powder here. Let's see where that gets us. I don't think that's going to be enough saturation. And yeah, it's definitely not enough. This is the red pearl powder that I use in my uh, American flag swim baits with the red uh, stripes for the flag. Just straight red pearl because that... Again, that way you don't get any bleed. If I was using a liquid red, it would bleed into the white, and then the flag would look all terrible. And we don't want the American flag looking terrible. All right, let's see if we can get you a cool angle here to show this filling in. Yeah, and we'll just kind of let heat fill in the rest. All right, let's see how the red shad worms turned out. That is so, I, I tell you what, for those of you who do not make baits, this right here, pulling a bait out of the mold is maybe the most satisfying thing in the world. Look at that. Perfect, an absolute perfect, right down the middle laminate red shad. Yeah, this is, it's so amazing. It's just so amazing. What a feeling. What a feeling. All right. Yeah, these turned out great. I'm really excited to see the whole set. Yeah, look at that. Let's just watch another one of those, shall we? Oh, yeah. What a feeling. Looky here. What a sight. Yeah. Ain't that something? Amazing what you can do when you got your temperatures dialed in. You can uh you can do awesome things even in small molds. Yeah. Alright. There it is. Old fashioned red shad.
done the old-fashioned way. Truly hand poured. All right, everybody, it's hot out here again. Uh, that's gonna wrap up this video. Like I said in my last video, I was planning on sort of doing a uh, you know top ten or top five you know best bass fishing lures that you can make at home in terms of soft plastic. So like top ten fish catching soft baits that you can make at home your very first time. So expect some sort of a beginner's video like that coming soon. Um, we are also going to refresh a video we did a long time ago about getting technical, very technical with plastisol preparation and using temperature to pour proper baits, okay? This is something that we have we touch on a little bit in every video, even this video, we probably talked about temperature a lot, just, you know, the new hot plate and everything, but there's still questions that I get personally out in the bait page, Facebook universe, YouTube comments, Instagram comments. There's still a lot of people really looking for guidance there and there's some not so good information being thrown their way. So um, we are going to do a refresher course on that. So it's all in good time. I promise we will get there. But uh, yeah, what an awesome, awesome surprise. I had no idea that this was coming this week. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy. Um, if anyone is serious about their hand pouring and wants to look into one of these plates, um, shoot me a message, shoot me a comment. I can put you in touch. Um, it's called Fishing All Out on Facebook. That guy right there, fishing all out, okay? So, look him up, he uh, he sells the hot plates, and uh, like I said, my old hot plate is gonna be coming up for sale once it gets a facelift. So, be on the lookout for that, but uh, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, thanks for watching today. Let me know in the comments down below if you liked the hickory shad swim baits better or the red shad worms. I'm curious what y'all consider to be the better bait. So, we'll see you in the next video.